Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native and the father of the effortless English system that trains you, that teaches you to speak English fluently, powerfully, and effortlessly. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join now at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, and you get my movie club lessons as well. Also, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. All right, having some problems on our live streaming today. Let's see if it's going to work. We're going to talk about the Effortless English community, uh, our international community, which kind of our nickname we call the Effortless English family because we like to have kind of a family feeling, a family feeling in our community, in our, our online community. We have an online community of people from all over the world, all around the world. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's just see. People are joining live again. We'll see if it works. Hopefully it works. Give me the thumbs up. I guess click the thumbs up if it's working, if the video is working for you. Please click that thumbs up and let me know so I can see that it's going up and that things are working. It is working. Evgeny says it's working. Nice. All right, good. Seems like we've got a connection this time, finally. Yep. All right. The number's climbing up and we'll get started here. So our topic. Our topic is Effortless English Community, online community, learning community. Now, in a class, in, a, in schools, you are put into a class, right? I mean, typically, you don't have much choice about it. You know, you decide, I guess you just, as a child, you have no choice at all right and even as a high school student even as a university student you have don't have much choice right in the university you register for classes so you know you can try to find the class and the time and the teacher that you want but you don't have a lot of choice about it you know you, you, you hope you hope you get lucky and you really don't know anything when you join in a school, in a class, you don't know anything about the other people in the classroom. Typically, at least for me, uh, you know, in my school experience, there was not much connection, right? Especially high school and college. Now, high school, I did have, I had friends, but they were not from classes, really. But uh, university, you know, really didn't make any friends in classes. I had friends from other activities, but not classes. But there's not a lot of choice, and there's really not a real community. You know, school is like prison. It's prison for children. So just like in a prison, you go to a prison, and there's kind of these prison rules. There's a lot of bullying in prison, you know, little kind of gangs almost. Well, in real prisons, there are real gangs. And in America, in, in the schools, there are real gangs. In many schools in America, there are real criminal gangs. And they're quite violent and terrible. So it's not a very good community if it's not really even a community at all, schools. But what's great about independent learning and the internet and online and, and other forms as well, where you are the boss of your own learning, you are the boss. And when you're the boss of your own learning, it doesn't mean you have to be alone, right? So this does not mean we're just completely alone. Now you do a lot of your listening and reading alone at home, or when you're walking around. So yes, a lot of the practice and work is alone. But it's also nice to have a community and connect with other people who are also learning the same thing. You can share ideas. You can help to motivate each other. With English, you can practice English together. You know, make a Skype group and do a schedule and chat and practice with each other in English. It's low pressure. That's the nice thing. You know, it's nice to talk to a native speaker. That is nice, but usually you have to pay them. You can use something like italki or some site like that, and you can pay someone to talk to you in English, a native speaker. And that's that can be useful. It's fine. 
But on, on the other hand, uh, you might feel a little more pressure, a little more nervous about that because you know they're a native speaker and it can be expensive. Whereas if you have a community of other learners, okay, they're not native speakers, but on the other hand, you can still talk about real topics. You have to use the words. You have to use English and understand it and have real communication. And with other learners, you don't have to pay usually. And the important thing then is to find good people. That's the key thing. Find good people. And this is something special. Uh, many people have noticed it. Something special about effortless English that, well, really the, from the beginning, from the beginning, we have had a special effortless English community. We call, it, we call it the effortless English family, but it has this, you know, very positive and accepting and encouraging mindset, attitude, rules, right? We have our code. That's the main reason, right? We do the best we can. We do the right thing. We show each other we care. That's our code for all of our community. If you want to participate in our community in some way, you must follow the code. If you don't, then I block you or ban you or whatever. So that's a lot of the reason. <laughs> but uh, what's good about this is that then we have quite a special group online. As many of you know, maybe you've tried to join a forum somewhere. You've tried to join other online groups, maybe a Facebook group, maybe a forum, whatever. And usually, I won't say always, but usually it's a bad experience. You know, there, there are all these people who get on to troll, which is a slang, right? Troll's just somebody who's usually some kind of sad little person and their life is sad. So they go to these internet groups and they just insult everybody and they act really rude and they act like, little children to get attention and this somehow makes them feel important um, and the sad thing is that most online communities don't control them don't get rid of them and so very quickly the group becomes you know nobody wants to be in the group the group just becomes garbage it's just filled with these kind of childish idiots called trolls and the people who really are interested in the topic, who really are serious about it, they just leave because they don't want to deal with it. They don't, you know, and it's especially with we're adults, you know, we're adults. We're not we're not a bunch of 13 year olds. So we don't want people who have a mentality emotionally that they're 13 years old and they just act stupid and rude to get attention. But that unfortunately, that is the common experience online you know i remember back when i used to ride motorcycles back when i was riding a motorcycle i tried to join a motorcycle group online online i thought oh this would be cool you know i want to learn more about equipment learn more about different motorcycles learn uh, about different cool trips you know in different parts of the world uh, motorcycling trips safety equipment safety training all that kind of cool stuff for motorcycles so i joined this group supposed to be like one of the big main motorcycle groups and it was terrible it was just filled with trolls and bullshit and everybody acting like children and m very few real discussions about motorcycle topics and as soon as someone would post someone would post a serious topic about you know let's say motorcycle safety and then but then after there'd be two three four comments of just being rude and and stupid and then other people reacted to the stupid rude comments and then it just became this you know insults and rude comments and stupid jokes and nobody talking about the real topic of motorcycle safety or anything about motorcycles really so i i immediately i was like well you know forget this and i just i quit the group immediately you know immediately meaning after a few days and I've had that experience with many different groups online, sadly. It is a common experience online where you're hoping to find a group of really interesting, cool people who share your interest, who share a topic or a hobby or something you're trying to learn. But in fact, it's garbage. And so we, however, do not have that because since I am the boss, it's not a democracy at all. If someone acts like that, I get rid of them, and I get rid of them immediately and forever. So we have a very, very, very positive group, and I encourage you to join because it can be nice to connect with other people. I mean, one cool thing about learning English, specifically English, as the international language now, 
is that you can make friends with people from everywhere in the world, in all parts of the world, people learning English, speaking English. So you can make friends in Europe, in Africa, in South America, in North America, Asia, you know, Oceania, everywhere, everywhere. And we have members and fans and people in our community from everywhere in the world. You can see it during our live shows, people saying hi from all these different countries all around the world. So it's a great way. It's a cool way to connect. And what's really fun is that sometimes when people travel, when Effortless English members or learners, when they travel internationally, they will meet other members because they connect online and they will say, oh, I'm coming to visit I don't know, let's say you're coming to visit France and then you you know a Effortless English member who is French. So you tell them, I'm coming to visit France and maybe they invite you. Well, hey, come, come to see me and they show you around and you have dinner, have coffee. It's very nice. You get to meet local people. You have this connection with people all around the world. I do this. You know, every, of course, all of you know me. And that's really nice for me because when I travel to different countries, I almost always meet Effortless English members and students. So, you know, I've met, I've had meetings with uh, members in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Thailand, in Spain, in Italy, um, in Ireland, uh, certainly in the United States, all because this happens also when people visit where I live, then I also meet them. When I lived in San Francisco, peep, when Effortless English members visited San Francisco, I would meet them often and you know have coffee with them. So really cool from all around the world. Now I live in Japan. I live in Osaka, and I have met some members here in Osaka. I met uh, a Korean guy. I've met uh, actually a couple of Koreans, and um, of course Japanese uh, members here and and others. And if you visit Osaka, please you know connect with me and. I will do my best to at least have coffee with you. So we can do this with each other. And we know that, oh, we have nice people. We have good people in our community. And you can d communicate online and get to know people and make friends. It's really, really nice. So let's talk about the important question which Jayesh just asked. How can you join the group? We've used different uh, social media for this in the past. And now, though, we are, we're going to go with Gab. Gab's the best one now. So before it was mostly Twitter, but I'm 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 sick of Twitter, and I'm totally sick of Facebook. Facebook's useless. So now it's Gab. So we have a Gab, and our Gab group is back. So let me show you on the screen now. So all of you who want to join and meet other great people, and you know they're going to be nice, you know they're going to follow our code. You want to share your ideas. You want to meet them. You want to do a Skype chat and practice English. And maybe when you travel, you can meet them and they can show you around their town or something or have coffee, whatever. This is it. So this is Gab, gab.com. Now, the first thing you can do is follow me. That's the easiest thing to do because I'll, I will always, I'll put a link on my profile to this Gab group. You follow me and you'll notice other people following me and you follow them and everybody connects. But it's much easier in the group because if you join the group, then you immediately connect with everybody else in the group. So everyone in the group is connected immediately and easily. So this is great. So it's gab.com. Let me go back to the other screen very quickly if you're watching online on video. So up, up here, you can see if you're watching the screen, it's gab.com slash, right, AJ Hogue or at AJ Hogue, my name, A-J-H-O-G-E. So gab.com at AJ Hogue. Follow me and you'll I'll, I'll put the link on my profile to the group. This is what the group, but in gab, you'll see groups. If you'll notice, if you I don't know if you can see on the screen right now, See, so pull it down a little bit. All right. If you look at the top of my screen, if you're watching on video, you'll see up in the, the very top, there's a green. It says Gab. And then next it says Home. And then next it says Notifications. That's where you get replies. And then finally, at the very top, you see Groups. It's also in green. So you click on the Groups and then you do a search. Effortless English. Effortless English. 
and you'll find it. And this is what it looks like. And it's red and white, red and white. It's a flag. A red and white flag is the logo on the on our group. And it says Effortless English. And then you just see over... I'm already a member, so in the blue it says Leave Group. But for you, it'll say Join Group. There'll be a little button here on the right side, top right. Join Group. You just join the group. Boom, you're a group member. If you post anything in the group, so you write anything. You see, I'm writing. If you're watching again, I'm typing on my screen here. That and if I hit publish, that will appear, and everybody in the group will see it. So you will, you can send out a message to everybody else in the group. Just post it, post whatever you want, write what you want, publish what you want in the group. Do it in the group, and then everybody else will see it. That's how you do it. All right, so advantages of using Gab. Number one, uh, this is a little technical. Not too technical, but a little bit. Number one, Gab is open source. Open source, what does that mean? Well, Facebook is closed. Google is closed. It means that they can put like a lot of programs to spy on you to get your information, and they do, and they do a lot. They also have total control. They can, a lot of censorship. They block people. They do all kinds of stuff um, where, for, for no reason or for their own political reasons. Gab is open source. This means that anybody, any programmer, really you can, anybody, can look at their program. Anybody can look at it. Open source. It's open. It's not hidden. It's, there's no secrets. There are no secret little programs in Gab because anyone who knows programming, if you are a programmer, you can look at their, it's called code, look at their code, look at their program, and you can see everything in there. So if they put something to spy on you, somebody will find it. Somebody will see it. So it's much more open so we can trust it more because we can see everything that's there, open source. This also means that uh, there's a whole community of people helping to program it and improve it. And open source in general is just a good, uh, it's just good in general, open source software. It's not controlled by just one company. You know, you could create your own Gab using that same programming if you want to. And we'll talk about the next thing that makes it great is it's distributed distributed. What does this mean? It's the opposite of concentrated. Concentrated means all in one, in one small group or one area. Distributed means spread out over many. So again, Google and Facebook and Apple, Twitter, they're concentrated. They're totally 100% controlled by one company only, right? Facebook is totally controlled by Facebook and all the, you know, Zuckerberg and all the freaks over at Facebook. Completely, they control it so they can do anything they want. They can spy. They can sell your information to other people. They can kick you off of Facebook for any reason and no reason. They can do anything they want and you don't even know what they're doing because it's they hide it. Distributed means that it's spread out. So Gab has, they have, you know, Gab.com. But we can also, like I, if I want to, I can start my own gab and i and i probably will in the future i can start my own gab on my own computer server it's called a server it's a big computer my own or one that i would rent from somebody so i can start it up i will use their same software my gab would connect to the main gab.com so they're still connected but my gab i control the gab company has no control about it they can't do anything we can do anything we want. We could call it Effortless English Gab. And Effortless English Gab would be, we could have our own rules. We could invite only Effortless English people, only our community. I, we have our code. We'll definitely have our code. If someone's a troll and they try to break our code, we can block them completely from the whole site. But And yet, at the same time, our Gab connects to the main Gab, the main big one, Gab.com. So you can still connect with everybody on the main Gab and they can connect with you. So you see it's kind of spread out. There's like local control for small groups, but there's also huge freedom because every group can have their own rules. 
So there's much less censorship and also more control. It's the best of both. So this is very cool. The Gab just changed to this new system and it's a, it's a big change and a very positive change. That's why I'm now on Gab uh, completely. That's why I finally decided to leave completely the other ones. Not completely, but I'm going to be inactive, not active on Facebook, not active on Twitter, not active on Instagram. See, before, Gab was also concentrated. They had their own system. They owned it. So, you know, I didn't really want to promote it too much because I thought, well, it's just like the other companies. Right now, they have a good policy. But what if they sell their company? What if they get a new CEO? What if they change their policy? Then it's just the same problem again. But with this new system, that problem is um, that danger is much, much, much less because I can start my own gab now. So it doesn't really matter what they do. I don't. And because they did this, it shows they're very serious about free speech. They're very serious about good user experiences. They're very serious about open source. So all of these things are fantastic. And so, you know, those are just the technical details of why Gab. That's less important to me. What's important is we have this positive group, the Effortless English family, so that you, we can encourage each other. And this is important because our challenge is starting in one week, August 1st. Our reading and listening challenge, the reading and listening challenge is starting. Already on Gab, people are saying they are increasing their listening time, increasing their reading time. Just the motivation, the excitement, the challenge is coming. People already thinking, oh, I, I want to increase more. I'm doing this already. I noticed already my Japanese time every day has increased since I created the challenge and, and, uh, I know it's coming now very soon. I, I have increased. I'm probably doing two more hours per day than before, which is great. Fantastic. And that's the effect. That's what I hope. That's the purpose of the challenge is to encourage all of us, you and me and everybody, to increase our reading time every day, to increase our listening time every day, and to encourage each other, encourage and inspire each other. And now we have our Gab group. So every day, what I encourage you to do during the challenge, it's three months, August, September, and October. During the challenge every day, you know, post about you know what you're reading. Post what you're listening to. Um, if you're having a problem, like your, your motivation's dropping, your energy's low, some other problem, you're frustrated, you know, ask the group. You know, what, what should I do? What's your advice? And everybody else will encourage you and give you help and advice. Um, share what, share your content, right? This means that all of you will be looking for lots of things to read and lots of things to listen to. So each day on our Gab group, tell everybody, what are you listening to today? What are you reading today in English? You know, if it's a lesson, like you maybe say, oh, well, this is my favorite effortless English lesson. This is my favorite VIP lesson. I'm listening to this one. I'm listening to this old podcast. It's a cool topic. You know, you should look at this and put a link. Or maybe it's an audio book that you found. You found a cool book or a cool audio book. Or maybe a website. Uh, recently on Gab, uh, members have been sharing links to websites that have ebooks websites that have English audiobooks, all kinds of cool stuff, apps that help you count your time, podcasting apps. You can share all of this stuff, so then we all share all these cool things that we're finding. And if you find something in Japanese, please share it too. It'll help me. <laughs> all righty, guys. So let's, uh, let's just go to questions and comments now and uh, talk a little bit about our community and this upcoming challenge. And, and mostly, like I said, I want this challenge to be something that will make our community stronger, that will show each other that we care, the third part of the code, right? This is a good opportunity, this challenge, to show each other we care, to help one another. So instead of having a mindset, I'm going to win, I'm going to beat everybody, instead the mindset is, I want to help everybody. How, how can I want to contribute to everybody? I want to inspire others in the group. I want to share the cool things I'm finding and doing and hopefully learn from them too. So all of us helping each other. That's what the challenge is about. So join the Gab group and join the challenge. 
All right, let's take a look. Oh, I gotta change glasses here. Yeah, right. Pablo says, it's just like in a classroom. We have to take care of the enthusiastic learners. Kick out the ones that are not interested and bother others. Rules are necessary. We show each other we care. Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. This is one of the problems in school. This is an, an, a, a big problem in school is it's forced. It's not voluntary, right? So you've got people in classes, and this is especially for you know young people in, in forced schooling for kids. You've got people who don't want to be there, and that's a bad thing. I, I think that it should not be um, forced. If they don't want to learn, then don't learn. It's up to the parents to figure that out. Yeah, Ibrahim Ali, I felt the same way. Ibrahim Ali says, when I was in school, I felt like I was living in a prison. School is prison for children. But now in Gab, I feel like this is my second family. We'll never find a better community, better than EE. Thanks, AJ. You're welcome. And you're a big part of it, Abraham. Thank you. Oh, Emmanuel Esposito says, uh, do you think it's helpful to block all the trolls? Because I run my own blog. Many trolls insult me, steal, my, steal many pictures on my blog, take advantage for their own benefits. Yes, block them. Block them immediately. I'll give you some advice about trolls number one immediately block them immediately no second chances no warnings they do anything that annoys you or goes against your you know your code whatever your code is block them get rid of them delete them and block them forever and number two don't don't argue with them don't even mention that you block them block them silently because they want attention remember these are like little children they're like about about kind of like four years old right and you know sometimes little children they do bad things to get attention from their parents they just do something bad and even if the ch the parents are yelling you da -da -da, then the child kind of feels good because they're getting the attention this is what they are so don't give them any attention at all don't even mention them just block block and delete with no mercy <laughs> <laughs> People are commenting on my hair. You look bald. Why? Because it's summer and it was hot and I just shaved my head. I shaved my head a lot on this summer. Yeah, Cleefy says, will this gab develop itself to make a direct video show? I don't know. They haven't mentioned it, but I would love for them to do that. I would, If I could do live streaming like this, uh, if we could do this on Gab, I would do it on Gab, but they don't have that feature, so I'm stuck with these other ones right now. Uh, Evgeny says, how many active members do you have now? It's hard to figure out what do you mean by active, you know. Does active mean people who uh, listen, who just who are just listening to the podcast? That's tens of thousands, you know, uh, for every episode. Um, it, does that mean the number of, the unique downloads, the number of different people who have downloaded and listened to uh, my podcast or my videos, that's like over, f it's probably over 50 million now. Uh, does that mean people who comment like this on the live? You know, that's only a tiny, tiny, tiny percent. The number of people who actually will leave a comment like during a live show like you all, that's less than 1%. I think I figured it out one time. It's like 0.1% usually just commenting on a blog or writing something on Gab. It's a tiny, tiny percent. Most people just listen only. They only listen, and that's all they do. And that's totally fine. I mean, I'm like that, actually. I don't really comment on people. Like, I watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos about fasting, for example. I never leave a comment, right? So I don't really, I just almost never comment. I do for Effortless English for, for our group. I do, but other topics I don't. Christy says, I agree. This is a positive group. Thanks to you and your strict rules. I've learned so much from your shows. 
Thank you, Christy. Yes. And this is why, you know, we've attracted such positive, wonderful people, which we can always see every live show I do. You can see how wonderful everybody is, you know, thoughtful and intelligent and positive. It's a great group. Yes. Abderamane uh, says, I joined the Gab group this morning. We'll achieve greatness together. Excellent. People keep asking about my hand. I've answered this question probably three times already. What happened? Did I get in a fight? No. So I'm holding a baby with one hand. I've got two babies, and uh, a lot of times I, have to, I hold them in one hand, and I was just doing this something with my wrist, you know, like holding the baby's getting heavy, and it injured something in my wrist. It's quite painful, actually. The baby injured me. <laughs> yeah, like Igor says, when I listen to you about your chal our challenge, I've already increased my motivation about listening. I can't imagine how high will be my motivation during the challenge. Exactly. Me too, right? A lot of people already are increasing their listening and reading. We're not, we haven't even started yet. Manuel says, I've got a, a, a last question. I'm excited about increasing my number of hours of listening and reading, learning everything very deeply, because sometimes I forget everything I learned. Why is that? Because it's totally normal. You will forget. This is, you, you, you learn, you forget, you learn it again, you forget. Maybe you go a little later, you forget. You learn, you remember it longer, then you forget, and then finally you remember forever. It's the same with all skills. You know, you don't just learn something immediately. You know, I always, I like to use golf as an example because it's just, it's a simple example. But, you know, you can, you can take a lesson in golf and they'll teach you the swing, right? And they'll teach you exactly how to hold, you know, the perfect grip on the club and they'll teach you the perfect swing and, you know, maybe you'll even do it a few times. But does that mean now you, you will always remember to do it correctly and perfectly? No, as soon as you go play, you will find you are hitting it wrong, wrong, wrong. Your swing sucks. You've forgotten half the stuff that the coach taught you. Your hands, you suddenly your grip is wrong. Your swing is wrong. <laughs> Everything's wrong. And the ball's going to the right and the ball's going to the left and into the trees and into the water. So then what? Ah, why did I forget? You go back to the coach. He teaches you the same stuff again, usually, almost exactly the same, to remind you. Okay, huh? You practice with him. Okay, you start getting better. Hmm. Next day, a few days later, you go play. Maybe you're a little better. Maybe you remember, maybe your grip, you know, your hand position is better. You're starting to remember to do that. But many of the other things you forget again and you do wrong. And so it's back and forth and back and forth. And this takes weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years. And really in golf, it never ends. Uh, and really in English, I guess it never ends too, because you can always learn more words. So this is just the process. It's, it's all things, you know, guitar players, I'm sure it's the same thing. You know, you learn a bunch of chords and songs and then you go and do something else and you come back and oh, maybe you forgot a few of them. Now you got to relearn them again. But the good thing is relearning the second time is easier and faster and your memory is a bit longer. You know, Doc, Stephen Krashen, I think I saw in his book, The Power of Reading, who knows the exact number, but he, some study he talked about where he said, you need, to, you need to see and understand a new word, a new vocabulary word 30 times. This is average. 30 times understanding it, seeing it, understanding it in a real situation, like in a book, and, and then you will remember it. Then that's just passive. That doesn't mean you can actually use it to speak, but it just means you'll remember it. So next time you see it, you know the meaning. So 30 times, 30 times you have to see it and uh, what is that? And you use the dictionary or you guess and you, uh, okay, yeah. And then guess what? You forget. And then number two, yeah, you, you, you learn it again. You see it again. What is that again? Ah, I forgot. And again, you remember it, then you forget. 30 times, and then finally you got it. And sometimes more. Sometimes more. I mean, I know this. 
you know, it, again, like the some words, I don't know why some words will, it's not even the frequency. It's just some words will stick in your brain faster. In other words, it, it just seems like you need like a hundred or more repetitions. Like it's like no matter how many times you like you try to remember it and then it just this and then it just gone again. So it's all normal. Don't worry about it. But the, the, the good news, the overall good news is during our challenges that the total number of words and phrases and uh, listening ability and, and grammar ability, all of that's going to improve a lot, a lot, a lot in those three months uh, for all of you as you do more and more. The more hours you do, the faster it will improve and you'll remember more and more. So don't get worried about forgetting. But, and I understand because, you know, I, I used to get really frustrated by that. When I was studying Spanish, I would get so frustrated. Ah, God, you know, I just, sometimes I, I swear I'd see a word 50 times, 100 times, and I'd still forget it, and I'd be really frustrated. You know, I would read the same chapter in a book so many times, and then I'd go back and i read it again, and still I couldn't remember some of the words, and I got really annoyed. But then I just started to realize this is kind of normal process. It's just normal. Because I noticed also, like I said, other, for some reason, other phrases uh, words and phrases would just stick quite quickly. And maybe it's something in my brain like that. Those phrases my brain wants to learn, right? Thinks they're important for some reason. And some, some, for some reason, others, your brain just says, ah, we don't need that. Uh, AJ, when will you do the next interview? I'm sorry, I've been so busy with my babies that I haven't uh, you know, I tried Cole Robinson and didn't hear back from him. And then I just haven't emailed anyone else yet to invite them. Uh, and that's just simply because I've been really busy with the twin babies. Um, I, I I know I've got two people I want. They're both homeschool moms. So I'm going to contact one and then wait. And then if if she doesn't respond, I'll try the other one. Uh, the Gab group is not on Facebook. It's on Gab. Gab.com. Namaz says, our group is learning about everything for development and being universal. Yeah, universal means true for everybody. Well, you know, completely true. Countries, self-development, sciences, truth, and the world. The best one, English. May God bless our group. Amen. Namaz, thank you very much. That's nice. Kareem says, I'm listening to your podcast. I feel enthusiasm. My listening skills have improved. I'm wondering, what if I joined your VIP course? Well, do it. Try it. I think you'll see that you'll improve quite a lot. Jithan says, is it a free or paid group? Our Gab group is free. Totally free. Luke says, uh, about the pronunciation course, why you don't have the TR sound? Is it the sound related or is it the related sound of T and R? Yeah, it's just T, R, TR, TR. You're just putting them together very fast. Like train, let's say. It's T, R, TR, train. If you slow it down, and of course that's not natural, but if you really slow it down, TR, TR, train. It's just the putting together of both sounds. Yeah, Full Rage says, um, with this challenge, I remember a video you made, Decisions Change Your Life. Right. The decision to do this challenge, you could make a very large improvement in three months. It can really help your motivation a lot. It's helping my Japanese motivation a lot. You know, this is what I, you know, I, I, I kind of went back and forth, like, should I talk about my Japanese learning with you all or not? Because I'm just starting my Japanese, you know, basically I can't speak at all right now. Um, but I thought, yeah, why not? You know, this will help my motivation i'll do the challenge with you all i'll do it with japanese and it has it's already increased my motivation hugely so it's i'm benefiting too which is wonderful lisa says i became a vip member in 2009 whoa i didn't realize that lisa i had no idea you were a member that long I feel that's 10 years. I feel that the effortless English family has become more interested nowadays. 
I really like the many intelligent comments. Enjoy the diversity of the group. I do too. I think the live shows are helping a lot. Yeah, uh, was it who was it that recommended this book, Pablo? I'm reading an ebook about digital minimalism. It's a good book. Thanks to an effortless English community member who suggested it. I'm enjoying it, and thanks to the member of this community. I'm thankful to be a member of this community. Great. Oh, Larkson said, I heard your name, AJ, first time in evil English teacher lesson from Flow English. I think you did the mini story of this lesson because it sounds like your voice. Yes, that's me. <laughs> I did those lessons. Uh, Flow English is a course I did with Chris Moses quite a long time ago, actually. So I, I, I went to his, he lives in North Carolina. I think he, I don't know if he's, I haven't been in contact with Chris in a long time, but he used to live in North Carolina. I think he still does. So I went to North Carolina and we recorded that course at his house in North Carolina. So he did some of the lessons and I did some of the lessons, but he owns that course. He owns that company, Flow English. It's, a, it's for lower level, but yes, that's me. Can and can't pronunciation. I'm still confused about can and can't. Sometime I heard no differently. Yeah, this I know this is a problem a lot of people have is hearing that T sound in the negative, right? Can't, can't. And now, now for saying it, it's a little easier if you're, if you're the speaker. When you're speaking, you know, sometimes with difficult sounds, you have to exaggerate them. You have to slow it down a little bit and do it extra strongly, right? Really too strongly, but... You, it's necessary to train your brain. So you say can't, and you maybe just really hit the last, the, that T sound at the end, and you make it very, very strong. Now, native speakers don't do that usually, but they're native speakers, okay? But as a non-native learning, sometimes, if, especially if people are not understanding you, if people get confused, like they, you say can't with the T, and they think you say can, well, then you have a pronunciation problem, and then you need to emphasize, exaggerate the T, the negative. Say, can't, t t get that little, t you know, just make it really strong. It, it, nobody cares, okay? It'll, it'll help understanding. Understanding is the key thing, not sounding cool. So just make it, you know, really exaggerate it. Can't, can't, can't. You'll kind of train your brain to get that sound out. Now, the more difficult issue is hearing it because native speakers, when they speak quickly, they are doing it, but it can be hard to catch it sometimes because it's it's so quick. It's kind of small and very quick. Can, can't, can, can't, can, can't, can, can't, can't do it. So let me, listen, I can't do it. Which one was that? Negative or positive? It was negative, can't. I had the little t, but the little, it's just a t. It's almost like it's just an extra pause. Sometimes you don't even, it's not really, you don't even hear the T sound so much. It's just like a little extra pause of air at the end that tells you it's negative. It's cannot. Whereas can, there's no, there's no, see, can't, can't, can't. It's a little, uh, there's a little extra beat if you think of it like music, a little extra quick beat for the negative word. So, you know, you just got, the, there's, that's the best I can help you with the understanding and hearing it. And then you just got to, you just take lots of hours of listening and you'll, you'll finally get it. But it is a difficult one for some people. I, I know that. Yeah, see, cool. N says, I really appreciate you for making this awesome community. I've talked to some of them on Skype. See, I told you. I've got some new international friends now. See, that's so cool. And we've had this in the past where then people, the people meet each other. Now, I've done gatherings, and when I start traveling again, I'll, we'll do it again, where we have had, uh, we've done them for VIP members, for example. We've done, I think, three VIP, we call just gatherings. It just It's mostly social. It's not like a serious seminar. I do seminars sometimes, but... Um, but the social, I like really the social ones more fun because we just get together, we meet in some city, 
and we have dinner together. Maybe we do some social thing where we have games and introduce each other and talk and chat. But mostly we just we just hang out together. We do some sightseeing together. And of course, we're talking in English the whole time. Go to a cafe. It's really nice. We've done them in Barcelona each time. So three different times we did in Barcelona, Barcelona, Spain. And so much fun. So much fun. Really great people. Really great way to connect. You know, I still have wonderful memories about all three of those gatherings. The last one was after I did the Camino de Santiago. So it was Joe and I, uh, my, my good friend Joe from LearnRealEnglish.com. We did walk the Camino de Santiago, and then we went to Barcelona, and my wife was there too, Tamoe, and all three of us, my wife and my friend Joe and I, we met with uh, lots of Effortless English members. It was really fun, really great. So we'll do that again sometime. You know, next time I go to Europe, we'll certainly do it. Europe's kind of convenient for a lot of people. Uh, right now, I can't travel because of our babies. and But uh, in the future, when, we, when I can travel again, we'll do it. And maybe we'll do one in Asia sometime too, somewhere in Asia. If you all come to Japan, that would be really easy for me. <laughs> Magda says I prefer listening but I know I must read more in English now I'm reading uh, Persepolis very nice and it's, a, it's okay to focus on one or the other you can do more of one or more of the other one if you prefer and it, uh, you know it's kind of nice to just switch sometimes too if you get bored doing one like your brain gets tired with listening sometimes mine does then it's, that's kind of a nice time to switch and do some reading. Uh, when will you make more Aesop fable stories? Oh, I'll do it soon. Maybe, uh, what's today? Monday. I'll do one this week. I'm going to jump down to the bottom. God, you guys type fast. Okay, let's see. Marco asks a common question. Whenever I see a new word somewhere in a book or something, is it helpful to write it down, translate it to my language, or just pass it, learn from context? Which is better? Krashen says, learn from context and guess. Some people like to take notes. I kind of am in the middle where I like to use an e-reader or I'm like I'm on link also, and I'll just, uh, I'll, you know, I'll click the word quickly and see the meaning. It reminds me. And then I keep reading, but I don't write it down because if writing it down, it just it interrupts the reading for me. And sometimes I'm reading while I'm listening. So I need I got to do this very fast. So um, I yeah, I'm just not a flashcard person. I occasionally do flashcards. Occasionally I'll go into some like story and I'll just write if there's just some words that just not I can't remember at all. I'll write them on flashcards. And it, but maybe like once a week I'll just go through the flashcards very quickly. Um, it's up to you, though. You know, it's, everyone's a little different. Some people prefer more review and more writing down. It just So try both and see what you like. I, I don't know that there's a correct answer. I think it's kind of what works for you. Abraham's inviting me to Egypt. I'd love to go to Egypt. I'm fascinated by the pyramids now. Because I've read some cool stuff about ancient Egypt and the pyramids and the geometry of the pyramids and the construction. And there's there's quite a lot of mystery there. It's very amazing, actually. I'd, I'd love to go. Hey, Tian Van from Vietnam. Good to see you. Yeah, so Z says, uh, Z, I think you did, I think I responded to you on Gab, unless this is someone different. Having a problem contacting you, I can't, I'm having a technical problem listening to the podcast. So uh, it must be your app or your device because no one else is having problems. Uh, you know, everyone else is listening to the podcast, no problem. So I recommend just try a different app. They're, most of them are free, you know, Podcast Addict, um, CastBox. There are a lot of them. Just do podcast apps. You'll find just huge numbers of them. So if your one app is having a problem, maybe just switch to a different app and try try using a different app. 
That's that's my best guess. But it's not the podcast because other people are listening just fine. People asking me to pronounce things. Can you please pronounce these words for me? Pastor, master, faster. Just want to hear the T sound. Pastor, master, faster. Hope that helps. <laughs> oh, Namaz says, I can't find the challenge website. Go to my profile on Gab. My profile. So this right up here again, right there. Gab.com slash AJ Hogue, not to the homepage. Go to my profile page. I have pinned. It means I've got at the top, always at the top. I have a post. I have a couple posts, but one of them has a link to where you sign up for the challenge. So that's where you find it. Yeah, Cleepy says, how can we make this intensity of learning English a habit in our life? Always trying to better than yesterday. See, this is the point. This is why I want to do the challenge, to build a habit of intensity. I'm hoping that, you know, we all get excited and, and, and intense about this challenge and it becomes a habit. Three months is long enough to create a new habit. And we all create a habit of listening and reading a lot, lot more than now. And, you know, honestly, this is, I find this is something for me. This, it works for me with fitness. The reason I decided to do this is that this strategy, this kind of thing has always helped me keep my physical fitness good. Because, um, you know, sometimes it's hard with physical fitness. You know, it gets boring. Maybe you're doing the same thing. You're doing the same push-ups and pull-ups or you're a runner and you get tired of running. At least I did. I would get tired of just running just, just for fitness, you know. Like it just, I don't know, I can do it, but after some time, start to get a little bored, maybe my motivation would drop. And what always has helped me, what I always have done in my life at those times is I do a challenge. And for fitness, I would, you know, sign up, I would register for something difficult. So a long race. In the past, when I was running, it would be marathons right? Like a marathon. I would sign up. I'd register for a marathon six months ahead. So then I know now, oh, now I have six months to get ready for this race. And I would make some little goal for the marathon, like, you know, under four hours or under 340. I would just, usually I just try to beat my earlier time, beat my best time, make a personal best. And so suddenly then with that challenge coming, I know I've got this big race coming. Now, you know, I would be very, very motivated to run more and more and more and train hard because I'm trying to get ready for the race. I'm imagining the big race. I'm imagining, you know, doing the race in a good time. More recently, I haven't run, been running so much. I'm doing more rucking, which was basically backpacking, right? Walking with weight. And again, what did I do? The first time in 2010, I did the Shikoku pilgrimage. It's a one-month walk around... A, Jap a Japanese island and again it but for six months I trained so so this gives me like this six months of high motivation and then I did the event and then afterwards I'm in great shape and then I have a really strong habit of walking and exercising which I then can continue for a long quite a while and when I finally then start to lose motivation again I start getting bored finally then it's time for a new big challenge this is what I've always done for my fitness level and it's worked really well for me to to keep me all my life with a good level of fitness so i thought well we can do the same with language why not do the same with english that it's kind of natural that sometimes even if you're very motivated that at some point your motivation will start to drop that's a good time to do something like this i'm going to make a big challenge and that's going to motivate me to make a lot of extra effort that will create great new habits, right? And we'll do that. And then maybe after the challenge is over, then we'll do another challenge later on. You know, as we start, our motivation starts dropping a bit, we'll do another big challenge. Maybe it'll be a speaking challenge. Maybe it'll be something else. I don't know. But we'll just keep doing different kinds of challenges. And uh, 
You know, we can use it for our English learning fitness. Pinche Prole says, I too am an under four hours marathoner. Nice. Now, I haven't run a marathon in quite a long time. Well, it's been, uh, I ran one in um, 2015. It's been four years. Ah, okay. Well, I'll lead with an, an idiom question. It's, Hi, coach. I'm from Tunisia. I want to ask you the meaning of milk it. To milk something means to get the maximum benefit from it. To not to continue doing it to get the most benefit possible. Not to just get a little benefit and then jump and do something new. But continue doing the same thing and getting the most possible benefit. Okay. Diego says, my podcast with CastBox is suddenly stopping all the time, especially on Brave New World episodes. Isn't that interesting? Might have to switch. Might have to change apps. Yeah, Elena says, where can I find your old podcast? On iTunes, I can only find the last 30. Well, that's interesting. I don't know. They changed it to only have the most recent ones. Uh, again, you might have to look into different apps, unfortunately. Abbas says, every day you add something to your teaching system. This improves our learning and keeps our motivation high. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Walid asks, what's the best way of improving our English, listening or reading? Hmm, they're both really good. <laughs> uh, maybe I'd say listening is most important. Probably listening is most important for speaking, for the purpose of speaking. But uh, reading is also excellent. Well, that's why we're doing both. Yeah, see, so Pablo says, I use Podcast Addict. I have all the episodes, including the old ones. So there's a good one. Podcast Addict. Everyone keeps asking about my hairstyle. It's summer. It was hot. <laughs> so I shaved my head. <laughs> Pinche says, you're skinny. You look in great shape. Good. Running and reading is the key to success. Yes, indeed. They're both very good. Like I said, now recently I haven't been running. I've been rucking. Rucking is kind of a... I think it's more, well, it's a military word. The American military uses it, and Brits use it a lot. And it just means um, it's a kind of exercise where you're walking. It's just walking. But the difference, the reason they call it rucking, is you're walking, but you're carrying a, a backpack with weight. So you're carrying weight. And, of course, carrying the weight makes it more difficult. So it makes it's more work for your legs, more work for your heart, everything. Uh, so it's kind of got, it's it's a nice mix of, it's it's more difficult like running is but it's it's a little bit more more slow like walking i like that combination so i'm still getting a good workout from the rucking but uh i can go a little more slowly and that's good why because 
now I'm rucking with babies. <laughs> so running with a baby, um, you know, I know people push them sometimes, but uh, I prefer just carrying my baby so I, I can just walk with uh, her and have a backpack on. And, you know, maybe I'm uh, about 12 kilos I carry right now. Uh, not a lot, but still, it's good. I like it. Vladislav says, yesterday I did a small challenge. I got to the city next to Moscow without buses or, or subways. I rode bicycle seven kilometers, then walked 20 kilometers. And I did all that in about four hours. Yeah, fantastic. See, that's great. That's cool too, mixing it up like that. I like it. You know, you do, you go and you do, you, you bike for a while. Then you get off and you can do some rucking. You can do, you can do some jogging. You go for a swim. It's like your own little triathlon. Cool. And listen to English at the same time. And you get four hours of English too. Aldrin says, can you speak some Japanese right now? Not really. You know, konnichiwa. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a low beginner. I'm just starting. So give me uh, six months, let's say. And I can try to do something. Hamon says, I'm so highly motivated. Thank you, sir. Great. We're all motivated for this challenge. It's really great. And the, the cool thing, again, you know, the fun part is we're all going to be doing it together, sharing our progress every day. You know, it, that, that, it's that effect. Like I said, it's like a run. Like when you do join a race, when you're a runner, can you run? You can run a marathon by yourself if you want to. I've, I've done that. But um, it's more fun to run a marathon with 100 people because there's a higher energy. Everybody's excited. It's just more fun. It's more enjoyable to do it with others. So that's why we're doing this challenge together. Now, shadowing technique. Fuchs says, thank you so much for your time with us, live streaming every day. I'd love to see you, and I can practice the shadowing technique. Wish you all the best. Thank you. I'm, I'm doing the shadowing technique, too. I don't always do it, but I do like it because, um, you, know, you know, one problem, one challenge is when you're trying to repeat the same audio many, many times that your brain can start to get bored with it, right? You've heard it uh, 35 times, and... You're starting number 36. And so it's really easy then your brain will start to kind of uh, think about other things. But what I like is the, sh the shadowing adds a new challenge and you can't get distracted. If you get distracted, then you stop shadowing. So the shadowing I find, I like to use it with things I know fairly well, things I've heard many times, especially. And uh, it improves my focus so I can get more repetition from the same audio. And because it adds this whole new challenge to speaking at the same time. Now, some of you guys are more, far more advanced. And like Fuchs says, you can, you can just shadow the very first time as you're hearing something. That's a bigger challenge, but it's a great challenge for you, especially if you're a little more advanced. All right, a couple more, and then it's time for me to go. How to be a successful teacher? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> um, it's hard to answer that question simply. There's a lot of things. I think the main thing is you've got to love what you're doing. You've got to be passionate and excited about it. And you got to really love your students. And uh, I think the key thing is with teaching is that to be a, a really great teacher is you have to be focused on your student's performance, not your own. I think that's the key thing. Again, I like to compare it to sports. So a great coach, a great manager, they're, they're not focused on themselves. They're focused on getting the best from the players, right? It doesn't matter if the coach is the best player ever. In fact, usually he's not, right? If we look at soccer, the, the best soccer players do not become the best coaches usually. Like, you know, Pele, I don't think he was ever a great coach. Um, you know, many of the great managers and coaches now in Europe, they, they were players. They were maybe good players, some of them, but not the very best. Most of them were not the very best, but they are the best at making their players play at the top level, right? So this is what, this is the mindset you must have as a teacher or a coach is that your job is to motivate. Your job is to coach 
Your job is to help them perform. It's not about you, really. It's not really about you so much. It's about them. So that's the key thing. Uh, you know, this is one reason, like, I've seen a lot of uh, some of the language teachers I've seen online. You know, some of them are very impressive as language learners. You know, they know a huge number of languages, some of them, but they're not very good teachers. And because they're too focused on themselves, they're too focused on always talking about, I'm, I've learned, you know, 10 languages and I can do this and I can do that and I do this and I, 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 I. And um, in some ways it can actually hurt the motivation of the students because the student is still learning one language and they're having a lot of trouble and their motivation's down and they feel like they... They can't do it. They have no confidence. So saying how great you are doesn't help them. In fact, it can hurt them. So you have to just forget all that and say, well, how can I help the student feel stronger? How can I help them have more confidence? How can I give them more motivation? How can I inspire them so that they achieve what they want to achieve? It doesn't matter about me. So work on that. That's my best advice. And there's many other things you can do depending what depends on what you're teaching. Yeah, Bao says, very nice comment. If I meet my students again when they are already professionals, that's when I consider myself a successful teacher. Right, right? You meet them and they are succeeding in that area where you taught them. Then you're like, yeah, you feel good. You're like, that's when you know. Exactly right. Are you American? Yes. Safi wants to know if I'm American. Yes, I'm American. Yikes, new funny word. Is it American English? Uh, which funny word? I'm not sure which funny word I just used. <laughs> That's American. Uh, N is asking how, how to make the pronunciation course more interesting. You've got to make these mental challenges like shadowing. You know, a large part of it. Uh, shadowing is part of it. You've got to make turn it into a challenge. So that it gives your brain a challenge. You're trying to, you know, and you got to think like an actor. A lot of it is the changing of my, of your mindset and your attitude. Yeah, like Vladimir is saying, hey guys, the shadowing technique is very useful. I quite like it. Now, some people don't like it, but I quite like it. It makes, it, it makes things more interesting to me. Inge says, uh, is Australian English hard to understand for upper intermediate? Well, there's nothing about Australian ac uh, the accent or Australian English that's more difficult uh, unless you're not used to it. And that's the problem, right? I mean, if you're used to American English and then you listen to strong Australian accents with, you know, Australian slang, then yeah, it will feel difficult because you're not used to it. You've been learning mostly American, standard American. So that's the only issue. It's not it's not a more difficult language. It's the same language. It's just that, you know, the the the, the reason it feels more difficult is less common, you know, internationally, globally. In, when you're looking at music and television and media, even podcasting, most things, even online, the biggest amount, the largest amount by far is American English. By far, right? I mean, America is just a big country. It's uh, certainly the most powerful English-speaking country, native English-speaking country, with the largest media. So most of <laughs> the material you find is going to be American English. So it's very common for you. It feels comfortable for you. You know it well because there's so much of it. And then number two is probably British. And there's a decent amount of British stuff out there also. And then, you know, Australian is much, much less, much, much less in terms of international media, international TV, international movies, 
um, YouTube channels, all of it, Australian English and Australians. It's a much smaller country, you know, population. Look at the population of Australia compared to America. It's smaller. And if you look at the size of the economy and the media, it's much, 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 much smaller. So that's the only issue. If you really need to understand Australian, then you just have to focus on it. You got to find podcasts and YouTube channels and other things that are specifically Australian. And you'll get used to it then. Ha! Ah, Ali says, my English teacher told me I will never learn English. I'm going to prove him wrong. You're probably already proving him wrong. But yeah, sometimes it's... Michael Jordan had that kind of motivation. He liked to... when so, He remember if somebody criticized him unfairly. He'd remember it and he'd use it to motivate himself to become better. It can work. Yeah, Humble Boy says, I think Brave New World is the most important book we have ever done. It's a very important book. I agree. Sorry if it's not related to the topic now. It's okay. I absolutely agree. I think Brave New World is the most powerful one and important one we've done so far. And in general, it's a very, very important book. That's why I chose it. <laughs> Nasser says, I'm having, I ha was having an argument with the blue pill person. He thinks I'm stupid. And I know he's also stupid. He needs to wake up. <laughs> yeah, arguing with the blue pill people is frustrating. I look like a kidnapper with this haircut. The bully becomes a teacher. How can a teacher say that? Yeah, right. Well, there are some pretty bad teachers out there, guys. <laughs> I've seen them. I've seen them. There are some terrible people. What do you think about the Bhagavad Gita as our next book? Well, Bufendra, that is a wonderful book, but I think it's beyond my ability to teach well. I don't think I am uh, quite yet qualified to teach that book. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about it, and I'll talk about sections of it, but to go through the whole Gita, um, you know, I think Acharya Ji would be a much better choice for that. People still saying, nice haircut. <laughs> All right, guys. I think it's about time to go. I'll take one more. All right, I'll take this question. Why not? Astell says, what do you recommend for us who actually need to improve our academic English skill? Yes. Okay, gotcha. So some of you do. You know, I, you know I'm not a big fan of it, of academic English, but, but some of you have the goal of uh, maybe grad school in an English program, English language program. Um, maybe some of you want to be professors, whatever, but you need it. So fine, but how do you do it? Mostly reading, reading, and you're going to have to read academic types of books. Now, here's the good thing. You don't have to read textbooks because that's still boring nonsense. Read classic books because those are very intellectual. The vocabulary level is very advanced, academic, but the stories and the content is still deep and meaningful, right? So classic, classic literature, for example. Now, that could mean something as recent as um, Hemingway. It's kind of, you know, modern classic, I would say. Hemingway, Fitzgerald, just giving you some American examples. Going back a little farther, if you want more difficult, Emerson and Thoreau and Melville, so you could read those kinds of books, their, their books, their novels, their essays, and you'll get a lot of vocabulary at a kind of academic level, that kind of grad school level of vocabulary, but not reading just boring, stupid, you know, journals and stuff. The journals, 
many of those journals are almost unreadable. They're so badly written. So I don't recommend them. And they're boring as hell. So read instead, much more interesting would be reading these kinds of things. You can even read, you know, English translations of classic books from other countries. Other, you know, you could read Tolstoy. You could read War and Peace. Read it in English. Of course, the original is Russian, but you could still read the English version. Again, it's going to be at a very deep level and a, and a high level of vocabulary. You can read English translations of, you know, the Iliad and the Odyssey. And, uh, well, we have uh, Carol is reading the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor. So, obviously, originally that was Latin. But that's fantastic. You can read... Um, the Gallic War commentaries of Julius Caesar in English. So there's so many great old books like this that are very interesting, that are very deep, that are very intellectual. Fiction, literature, and also nonfiction that will give you that academic level of English, but in a much more meaningful way. So that would be my best recommendation. All right, then. So just to summarize, gab.com at, at AJ Hogue, gab.com at AJ Hogue. Join our group. Our group is back. The gab groups are back. This is the best way to meet everybody else, especially now is a good time because we are starting our challenge in just one week. I'm really excited about this challenge. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll talk more about it. I look forward to hearing about all of you. I know some of you guys are very motivated. You'll be very inspiring to see how many hours you're doing and uh, I'm also curious what you're listening to. I'm curious what kinds of podcasts and books and audiobooks that you will find and share with us. So lots of love to you all. And as always, join my VIP program. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Quit. No. Commit. Commit, don't quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com.